What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about another function of Fredo Scale, the ability to stretch an object without causing distortion. Before we get started, I want to take a second to thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Fleur Nguyen, Robert Bliss, and Sake Jim. So Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extensions that I cover every week. Uh, this week, uh, we did something a little bit different, and we voted on we voted on a new tutorial for extensions that we've covered in the past. This week, my supporters voted, and they voted on a new Fredo Scale tutorial. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, maybe vote on the extension that I cover every week, uh, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is a function of the extension Fredo scale and I will link to some other Fredo scale extend or tutorials in the notes down below. I've talked about it in the past but haven't really given it a lot of attention and so and it's a really powerful piece of this extension so I wanted to talk about it a little bit more and so the option that we're going to talk about in this case is the box stretching tool that's contained in Fredo scale and I will also link to Fredo scale in the notes down below. Basically the way this extension or basically the way this tool works is it's going to allow you to stretch an object inside of SketchUp. So in this case, you can see how if I was to activate this and drag on it, it would let me stretch this sphere inside of SketchUp. So you can do that with any kind of shape. So for example, if I was to select this cone and click and drag, you can see how this would allow me to stretch this cone and uh, it only really stretches from a center point inside of the cone. And so this is really powerful for a few different reasons. So probably the biggest reason is if you've ever had an object like, let's say, let's go with this, let's go with this door. So if you've ever wanted to scale an object and make it a little bit wider or something like that, and you try to use the scale tool, the problem with this is as you scale it, you get distortion inside of your model. So you can see how right here, as I click and scale this, not only is my door scaling, all the other things in it are scaling as well. So the mail slot is scaling, the handle is scaling, um, and the frame is scaling. You don't necessarily want that. Like if we wanted this to just be a little bit wider, what we'd want to do is we'd want to be able to use like a center point and just make this a little bit wider. And so that's what this tool allows us to do. So if I was to select this door and then come in here and click on the button for box stretching, what I could do is you can see how I can actually click and drag this and scale my door out and the only thing that's adjusting is the geometry in the middle. So you can do this without creating that distortion, which is very powerful. So again, same problem if we were to take this table and scale it out. That's fine, but you can see how the legs are scaling along with it. So you're changing the size of the legs. And let's say you're a woodworker or something like that. You don't necessarily want that. You just want this to scale outward from a certain point in order to make it wider. So if we were to use box stretching right here, and I was to single click, you can see how I can scale this in or out based on that point rather than scaling all of the geometry in here. So you can see how when I resize this, the legs are staying exactly the same. And so one of the functions I didn't really know about with this tool is when you activate it, so if you activate box stretching and then you right click, there's an option down here for show or hide divider. And so when I click on this, this is now going to show a divider showing where this is being scaled from. So you can see how this divider is in here. Well, when I scale this, you can see how it's scaling it based on this divider's point. And what's even more powerful is that you can actually mouse over this and click and drag, and you can move this. So you can see how as I click and drag this, I can set this point to different locations which is very, very powerful and really nice to have in your toolbox. And so the other thing about this is there's also an option to do it about center. So if you remember when you scale something about center using the scale tool, so if I tap the S key and then I hold the control key, this is scaling about center, meaning when you scale something, it's going to scale outward from a center point. Well, you can set box stretching to do the same thing. 
you can right click in here once you have this active and you can click on the button for from center and so once you scale something from center it's going to scale on both sides of this point and one of the really really cool things about this that I did not know about until I started um, researching this video is when I mouse over this if you have about center set or from center set and you click and drag this this will actually generate multiple planes that you can scale from. So I could actually set this to scale outward from this plane and from this plane. So now if I click this, you can see how this is going to scale from both sides of this plane. And so in this case, this window might be a little bit of a bad example, but this door is a perfect example. Because if we were to activate this, if we were to select the door, activate box stretching, and then mouse over this point, if I click and drag this over to this point and then right click and go to from center, you can see I can actually set this in the middle of these decorative wood um, pieces. So now I could scale this outward uniformly from this point right here. And by the way, this also works on the blue axis or the green axis. So um, if you wanted to scale this outward from the center like this, you could do that as well. So you can see how there's a lot of different things you can do with this. And so if we were to do something like, uh, if we wanted to scale this couch, for example, and probably the first thing I need to do is not scale these pillows, but if we wanted to scale this couch outward, we could activate this tool. I'm gonna go ahead and get outside this group. We could activate this tool, click on this, and then mouse over this. So we could mouse over this point click and drag this and do this from about center and you could scale both sides of this couch. So this can be a massive time saver for scaling anything like door frames or other things like that or tables where you don't want things on the edges to get scaled. You just want things to be scaled from a point in the middle. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this helpful to you? Did you know it could do this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.